Hey you guys, what's up? I'm now in the Las Vegas garden. I got John Kohler here. We are going to be digging up the sunchokes here. Got four different varieties growing here. I done a previous episode harvesting in California where I was growing in mainly shade. So I would love to see the contrast, how they grow in different climates and here in a lot more heat. And there was a, the tree recently got trimmed. So it's got, a lot more sun at the end of its lifetime but throughout the whole season it's got pretty bright light and the heat of course so are you excited about the harvest yeah i've grown chunchokes in california where they did really good in northern california and in vegas they haven't really produced that well for me although they i am in a pretty shaded spot so yep. like i put it in a really shaded spot so it doesn't get a lot of sun so the tubers don't develop it's very important to have good sun and i'm kind of wondering myself how these guys did here me too. And especially what I learned in California is that all of them that were in just morning sun, basically, the white ones tend to grow a lot better. Like doesn't require as much sun as like the red one. Mm. Yeah. So let's just Yeah. See. And it's cool because like some varieties like really want to flower a lot. They're still kind of like, this is the point when you should harvest. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like the leaves are turning yellow. Like this is really not photosynthesizing. It's kind of getting to the end of the life cycle. So you might as well just cut this, get it composted. And there's another one in front, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just already turned brown. So I don't know if that was a watering issue or it's just a different variety. It just it kicked over earlier because of the cold weather, you know, came and we've had some, uh, you know, high 30s. We haven't gotten a frost yet, but we have had high 30 nights and really, really a uh, wind chill factor, which makes it even a couple degrees colder. Yeah, for sure. And there's, so I, like I said, there's four varieties. One of them, I forget which one, but I'll make sure to link it down below for the information for you guys. But one of the varieties can withstand the cold better than others. And then there's another one called the dwarf variety, which is supposed to be ready even by August. So it's like an, like- Early? It, yeah. Wow. So it grows up to about six feet versus 10 to 12 feet. And then, yeah, they should be ready to harvest by like August. Cool, so if somebody wanted to get some of these varieties, because basically I just found them at farmer's market before and got them in some rare, plant pl sales and grew them. I think I grew two varieties before. So it's really cool to see four. I know like the Seed Savers Exchange has a lot of different varieties in their catalog, you know, that you could trade with other people. But um, how can somebody get some of these, Wendy, if they want to source some of these cool varieties? Um, I Hopefully there would be plenty here for us to eat and share. And I'll, if there are some, you know, extras, I'll make them available on my website. Wonderful. And your website is? Wendyland.com. It's like I'm interviewing her <laughs> for <a> video. <laughs> yeah. So I read that the birds really love these seeds and I'm, I hear a lot of bird sounds out here. But so you, did it go to seed? I've never I'm seen, wondering, I've yeah. never seen sunchoke seeds Oh wait, myself. aren't these seeds? Well, I, I don't know, try Actually, to plant them because yeah. the seeds I've gotten, I've gotten things that look like seeds yeah. and then they've never grown into anything. It's so. hollow actually. It seems like they've eaten the seeds because that's that's just what I read about like through researching is that they said the birds really love these seeds. I mean, they are part of the sunflower family, right. so. They should, they should make seeds, but I would always encourage to grow by the, the tubers, you know, super simple, yep. super easy. Faster that way, yeah. More reliable. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm excited to do some digging. And then also different varieties grow. Um, some are like are clumping, some are like more spreading. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I've had mostly like spreading varieties. Actually, the clumping would be cool because you could just pull up the root and I saw yeah. you had a cool Instagram picture of That's like a, a root with all these different yeah. ones around. I'm like, wow, how did she get that? Mine are always big and funky and like yeah, all over the place. So easy. It's great for container gardening mm. if it's like all clumped up, right? easy for harvest well, with a container you just dump the container out and they're all right there anyway That's so they true. don't need to clump but then i would need a much larger container if i want a bigger harvest if it's like the type that spreads well i've had the kite that spreads in just a pot and mm -hmm. i just literally forgot about it and like it was bulging out of the pot and broke the plastic wow. i have a video i don't even know how many pounds it was i mean it grew <laughs> like amazing. 10 pounds in one five gallon pot it was insane that's amazing one plant one plant yeah yeah i drew i put planted one tuber in there mm -hmm. and it, they multiplied like crazy but that's this is awesome northern california weather optimal <laughs> <for> sun <laughs> jokes i've determined <laughs> we'll have to see how these ones would do that did then all right well let's dig them up okay let's go so right. let's just start from here moving down that way all right we'll start so we're just gonna harvest like Let's pull it up, however you do it. Um, so it looks like there's two here. All right, well, I usually just like dig around because you don't know where you're gonna, and I never, I only use my hands because I don't use any kind of a shovel or anything. Yeah, I you hate could, to like, cut through them you too. You can pierce them. Oh, look, there's a little tight. So that's a, you could plant, that's a good planter. <laughs> you could plant that. So I like to dig around and down first. 
and then kind of pull up. Yeah, maybe we should get a tray, you think? Um, okay. Got a lot of nice coconut coir, basically kind of mulch mixed in. Yeah. It's digging very easy. So easy. Imagine adding some more like some biochar, some worm castings, all that just to make your own like cocoa corn mix. Oh yeah, it's got, he, there's some really good soil down here. Oh yeah, see they got some, yeah, maybe get like some kind of tray or harvesting so we could put them all in there. Yeah. Like, the my micro Las Vegas ones, see I like to dig down underneath before underneath first mm. because they'll like just they'll be like all over the place within a radius yeah. so that's why i'm trying to go a little bit wide just to make sure there's a yeah and actually what would really help a lot is if you had a sifter i have some cool sifters oh like, yeah that has like pretty large holes yes so we might miss the tiny little knobs so there's like is that the one you originally planted or how big yeah. was the one you planted much smaller um mm, i got, got them yeah i think mine were about Let's see, this size. Oh, wow. This was the largest size that I got, but wow. usually about this size are the ones I planted. So you can see how hardy they are. You got some uh, Egyptian spinach <laughs> mixed in. Yeah, it's the red Egyptian spinach. It's a nice, it's a nice size one. Well, there's a little small guy you could replant. He's yeah. so super cute. So cute. But I'm not really I'm not really finding like this. Of, this uh, one didn't grow that much. Like you see there's just, Yeah, what variety is this one, do you know? I'm trying to think. The plant never got super huge. Yeah. Like some of my plants are twelve feet tall. Yeah, so I'm excited to see what I those mean, ones about, in the back uh, are. That's about the right probably size. You'd think it would have made more, but it looks like it just made one. Yeah. Tiny little things. Yeah, well, we'll see at the end of the video to, you know, find out which variety is actually worth growing. We say maybe it's not the exact condition that it's in, but then, I mean, there is a... What did you plant them to? Uh, I planted them really early in the spring. Mm. Yeah. That should have been enough Good time. Question. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's too hot. I mean, my, once again, my experience with sun chokes... NorCal. With, well, no, in Vegas, oh, is that they don't produce a lot. Mm. You know, I've never gotten like, I mean, in NorCal, I get a lot and in here, it's almost like wasting my space. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they do grow and they do shoot out and they'll come up again because mm. we'll probably miss some and he'll just, there'll be some here coming up next time. But like, it hasn't been my most productive plant by any means. I see. Hopefully there's a variety here that would suit yeah. places well, like maybe, Vegas. Maybe we'll that's find the whole out. Ticket. You got to find the variety that's more heat tolerant because it gets extremely hot. Yeah. And, uh. You know, my, my opinion is that the sunchokes aren't super big fans of the heat. Mm. Well, the kinds I've grown anyway. Yeah. The tubers are always really small. They're good for seed stock, but there's not a lot of food there. I see. Yeah, I don't think there's yeah, much think, more. Think, oh, 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 yeah. There's like a little small baby. <laughs> see, we're, there's going to be some come up next time. We're not yeah. going to get them all, but I think... Uh, I think we're I think that's about good. Even if we didn't miss it, oh, there's, look, oh, there's oh, there's a good size is a one. Is that a different variety that or looks, what? I, yeah, these two look different. But the thing is, maybe they're red when they're younger and maybe they... That's a good I mean, point. Yeah, because I'm seeing there is a little bit of like a pink on this one. I mean, climate makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's why I've really had to try to find a lot of things that really work in this climate here. Yeah. You won't know until you experiment. Like, I mean, this, oh, where does this oh, random one go? Oh my god, another one. <laughs> yeah, this is like this is like an Easter egg hunt in the garden. It's so fun. Like you gotta get the kids out here digging. It's like, what am I gonna find next? It's like no. a for gold or rings with a metal yeah. detector on the beach. <laughs> yeah, generally I don't find sunchokes go more than like a, a foot or so. I don't find them like super deep, so as long as you're going mm. about a foot down, I think we should be pretty yeah. good. Oh, this is a nice big one. I would never have guessed. <laughs> Finding a lot more in that corner, huh? It's Yeah, I think it likes the edge where it's pretty moist. Mm, yeah, that is what I noticed in uh, the container when I was there because I put, you know, the drip irrigation, the one that's like right by the drip irrigation, it did produce a lot more. I think it likes consistent watering and like the soil being moist. They do dry out pretty quickly if you harvest them and left them like, in the air, out in the open. Yeah, so what's the best way to store these, Wendy? Uh, <laughs> I would put um, either like potting mix or like cocoa core. I mean, something that's just really like pure, doesn't have too much nutrients to encourage the germinate, like for them to sprout if you want to 
keep them to eat, keep them fresh. So I would just put like, for me, it's cocoa core. And it's just so I spray them down a little bit moist cocoa core and cover them, put them in a, a pot. And uh, that's about it. Don't overwater because you're kind of encouraging, you know, them to germinate. How do you do it, John? I mean, pretty much the same way. I just take like a five gallon pot with holes in the bottom. Yeah. I would then put whatever I have, potting soil mix, if I had coconut coir, a clean mix, you know, you don't want to put like raw chicken manure or, yeah. you know, freshly composted chicken manure, but some good compost out of my compost bin mixed with some other organic matter in a bucket and then very important or a pot. And then I'll put it in my garage. That, that's what I'm going to Don't put it, it outside because if you freeze, it could mess them up. So you want it like, and then keep it like very, like barely moist. You don't want it to dry out, especially in the arid climate here, but you don't want it sopping wet either. Yeah. Um, they're only going to store the best that way. If you try to put them in the fridge, they're going to get soggy. They're not going to store well. And if you forget to harvest them from your garage, then next year they're going to sprout up and then you can divide them and grow a lot more. So that's how I like <laughs> to do it. Yeah. And once you start seeing them about to sprout, really, if you don't plan on growing all that many, really got to eat them because they're not going to taste very good when they start to sprout. They look like those like atoms or what do you call like those kind of like science books like those big <laughs> <pop>. <laughs> they're just so cool like looking. Those models. Yeah. And so cool looking. Next one we're gonna go Oh, it'll be this one right here. That one? So yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see this one. Yeah, I should label these better. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is actually white fuso here. I wonder if that could be a dwarf one. Because the shape looks more like the dwarf variety, which did really well for me, you know, in Southern oh, California. Your, so you planted one little small tuber to start? Yep. Like this small or smaller? Um, each one of them, this would be the largest size tuber that I planted. So certain ones are even like half of this wow. size. And then what was the yield? Did you do on your video or did you post about it already? I did, I just posted that video up. Uh, harvesting the four different varieties. And which one yielded the most for you? The dwarf. Oh, dwarf. And how many pounds? Oh, I didn't, I didn't I weigh it. it. Right. Yeah, but definitely but it was, it was like obvious that was a lot more. The pink crispy did, um, was the worst. I only got one or two tiny little things, oh, wow. which supposedly they say that one pink crispy can trail like three to five feet across. So it can produce like hundreds of pounds so maybe of food. Also, Southern California is a more warm climate. So yeah, maybe so maybe optimal. it's not. Yeah. Maybe in a colder climate. Mm hmm. Okay, so right here. Okay, I'm seeing here oh, already. Some right here. Oh, it's yeah. A nice, big one. Oh, it's black. I wonder what's going on. Wow. There. So we're doing <laughs> Yeah. Well, wow, it's an interesting shape probably like really wet that's why it looked like that it's interesting so this is part of the white fuso I just pulled up see how it's like starts growing at the end of the root oh, wow. yeah ah, so some one. <laughs> cool yeah so I think the white fuso also trails this is one of the ultimate perennial crops that everybody I think should grow uh, I mean, the sunchokes I've grown never really spread like this much. They're usually all confined in a pretty close yeah. area. I kind of like the ones that go, grow a bit closer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Little knobs. Well, there's a few big wow, ones Wow, it's here. a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> you need almost like a little box. Yeah. You should get a little box. This is the white fuso. That's what I was talking about earlier. It's uh, more elongated, has more smooth texture. So I can see maybe chefs would prefer, or, you know, cooking using this because it just seems like it's uh, some people's experience probably a little more pleasant because it's thin skinned and smooth.
white fuso. <laughs> Look at this one. So they say that these can trail up to like 12 feet long, like one of these sort of. That's insane. Like yeah. You could have a super huge long sun choke. I'm used to just the ones that are like round. Yeah. So these ones are on the, they're, these are the spreader kinds. That's kind of cool. Yeah, right? Just like at the end of the root, it'll start swelling up like that. White fuso. So this is the red fuso. Is this the variety you you grow actually? I have no or idea. I, I grew a you red just know it's red. It's called yeah. It was unnamed. Yeah. I'm not that technical. As long as it's food and I can eat it. Me too. It's just that when people ask, like, I'd like to know. I guess. <laughs> I'll just regrow it. I'll send yeah. you some tubers. That's easier. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would love to know people that are in a little more northern climates, like how these would do. I seen them just growing wild when I was back east. Right? Yeah. Just patch. Yeah, that's what people, people say. People really hate them because they yeah. take over. Yeah. <laughs> they really like to seem to go to the edge. Yeah. Uh huh. I think they like. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about this one. We should put it somewhere. <clears throat> Yeah, I just see so much potential of these getting bigger. It's just the climate, I think, is too hot for it or something. So will this something this small grow, Wendy? Did you plant things this small? No, not that small. <laughs> uh, let's see. Probably this small. That small? This, yeah, that skinny, that small, about that size. I, I yeah, plant it. I think the white fuso was about that size when I planted. I think there's something against with the edge, so I try to like yeah. plant it in smaller containers that are yeah. contained, or maybe plant near the edge, and then mm -hmm. maybe maybe if it's in a big bed, maybe even put, put like some dividers, edges yeah, in there. I don't know. That'd be a good test to see, yeah, like open true. versus closed, and see mm -hmm. if they make more tubers. Yeah. Yeah, because like like you said, like once it stops, right, it'll stop growing. Right. Otherwise, it'll just keep, it'll keep growing, growing trilling, yeah. like just, go and go. Until something happens. And yeah. The tuber. I don't know what causes the tuber to form. No. What if you grew I mean, it, it in like, like? I mean, I'm digging up a lot by the. In the edge, edge like, huh? Yeah. A lot. So check your edges. Okay. It seems to be almost a pattern. What if it's like? You grow with a lot of rocks around with that kind of... Yeah, maybe. Maybe put some rocks in your yeah. soil because that'll give it things to bounce on. Yeah. Okay. This is the next one, right? The yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm on the edges, like you said. They come out pretty clean though. Yeah. Pretty easy to wash. Oh, this one like splitting. What do you think? Like cracking? Like is that like too I much water know. or? Who knows? You said never had them split before. So yeah, it's my stress. first. <laughs> time. I mean, they're not. They're native to America, but not. Yeah, they're to not the desert Southwest. Yeah. Right. Although we did learn something, mm -hmm. we did to learn the best variety for the desert. Yeah. By the harvest that we're getting. Exactly. We got to grow different kinds to know. It's like even like growing the same, if you're growing the same, like one variety you wouldn't know. Or if you're growing the same variety in different places locations on your in the yard, locations, yeah. yeah, you'll learn what they like and don't like. like I'm real still finding red ones all the way over here. <laughs> Yeah, these are all like the red fuseau. Um I'm not seeing the pink crispy. That's really strange. I didn't find that in my garden too. 
Well, yes. I think I got it. Did you get it? Yeah, I have to use the stick. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to leave. It was hugging. Hugging the wall. Well, these are the harvests. It took quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> quite a while. But we did discuss the different types of experiments that I could do next time to improve the yield, hopefully. Right. Cause and we'll, to sum it up, what was that? To sum it up, I think I've seen mostly we've been digging a lot towards the edges. Yep. You find more of them. And it was the red variety, the red fuso that seemed to be the most productive the in most productive. The cli this climate in Vegas. Yep. It was just trailing. Like that bed was really, say, like 10 feet long. Yeah, I mean, it was just, they were just it all over, just like all totally over along the, the edges, the corners. I love these guys. Yeah, they're so cool. Again. They look like uh, mines in a minefield or spaceships. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying to John, like, they're too cute to eat. But you could eat them. <laughs> yeah. They're so cool looking. And then, um, yeah, so so I'll just show you guys which the, the varieties are. This is the white fuso. This is supposed to trail, too. You can tell when we were uh, harvesting them. You can see there's so many of those roots. It's just that they weren't forming, mm, right? right? And then you can definitely see, like, the potential of them forming because... Like this is a little. It, it was gonna form, but maybe it, the plant's too stressed, so it's not forming for whatever reason. Yeah. Probably the climate, weather, or it doesn't have enough like different kind of growth biostimulants, because probably nothing gets sprayed <laughs> on the garden or anything. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I totally see the potential. Like this one's really skinny, but you can see it's yeah, like you the can see it would it would have like grown one, two, it would have grown there. Yeah, and then it, and then it got too cold too quick. We had a nice sweet spot of weather for like about the last month. Bit, yeah. That it probably really put on a lot of growth until it got too cold, and then it's just done. Yeah. And then the so the white fuso looks so much different than the red. The red are more like round. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, they're really cool looking. Uh, the pink crispy was. Not successful at all, right? You here. don't think you have any of those? I had back home, I think I dug one. And you know what they look two. like, so none I of these red ones are those. No. Yeah, because uh, the pink one looks kind of like this, the pink crispy. Uh -huh. It's like a white fuzzle, it's more like just like a swelled up root, really. So, like more smooth and elongated. I don't see any of that here. I think that should be pretty easy to, uh, easy to identify versus like the round ones. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't, I'm not seeing any of that here. Then there's the, I believe this should the be the, the standard one. It got way too dark to pull up the the last variety, which would be the dwarf one. And that one's pretty easy to distinguish too because it just pulls up as like one like big oh, clump. clump. Yeah. yeah, the dirt was also really dry over there too. Mm, so and, so and it was dark, so we didn't want to try to do that. Yeah, it was like the drip irrigation was off for a few days, mm. I think. So. so we'll see how that one will do, but it did great for me in Southern California. Like I yanked the whole thing out. I was like, whoa. Yeah, a bunch. This is like a nice. bunch of so easy to yeah, harvest. My favorite are these red ones. I mean, me too. I, just, I just kept digging more reds and more reds. And yeah. They're kind of small from what I'm used to, but I mean, they made a lot and maybe with some proper growth stimulants and maybe planting in a different, you know, maybe a little bit more shade, a little bit cooler spot. I'm not exactly sure how much water was put on, maybe a little bit more water. I think it stayed pretty moist like that. I see. Yeah, when we were feeling it out, it was like that, I think, mm. most of the time. Uh, it was getting more filtered light because that tree was not trimmed through the hottest time of mm. the summer. Yeah. Yeah, so in some climates, these should just really take off. I mean, maybe here, if you're really trying to grow for food use, maybe sweet potatoes would probably perform a little bit better because you're going to mm -hmm. dig those up pretty soon, right? Yeah, I'll be digging that one up for another video, so yeah. it's like, because that grew really well. Yeah, my, my sweet like potatoes <laughs> did last year really well. Mm. Like a lot, I get a lot yeah. more production from, from less plants than from my sun chokes. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. But I these are good for seed. I mean, these are perfect size perfect to ship size. out to people so that they could grow them. I mean, these, yeah. these are just boom right there. I would love to know how you guys deal with these. I mean, like in different climates, growing, shipping them anywhere in the U.S. and see how they, you know, do in different conditions. Uh, because, like I mentioned, the, the pea crispy, supposedly, I... I grew that variety specifically because they said that one tuber can produce hundreds of pounds of food because <laughs> it goes like three to five feet in different here. directions. We're yeah, unsuccessful all here. So if any of you guys have grown that variety, let us know down below how, how it did for you. And cool. You want to try them? Let's try them. Yeah. So we just cut it in half. Yeah. Or I think I'll try one each. 
Whatever yeah, you want one do. each, and let's start with the white because I think red usually any deep colored ones would have like a stronger a little more flavor. Yeah. yeah, so let's try the mild one. This is the regular. You want to try the regular one first? Yeah, you want to cut it, or just each person take a whole one, or yeah, we can take do? a whole one. All right, single cool. one. All right, you want to eat it first, or want me to eat it first? Uh, I'll eat first. All right, <laughs> eat it first. Ladies first. Oh, thanks. It's so crispy. Yeah, I can hear the crunch. <laughs> It's been a while since I've had one of these, actually. I didn't even think I harvested them last year for my California garden. Oh, oh yeah. I was just too busy. Must so have a lot I, of they were multiplied there. a lot more. I bet. <laughs> and got a lot bigger. Those you can get a huge. forest of them there now, right? Yeah. And they're against my back fence. Harvest. Yeah. Mm. It's like a water chestnut-ish mm. kind of texture, right? And like super white on the inside. And I think when it gets closer to the notes, it's a little sweeter. Mm. Mm. Very mild. Mild flavor. I like it. Looks like a Klingon like head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and we'll try this. Uh, wow. It's I love when they're dress. super fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, these have a really neutral flavor. Yeah. These are one of the tubers you can easily eat raw, and actually I encourage you to eat it raw. I know it might give some of you guys some gas. <laughs> That's right. Because it has actually beneficial um, prebiotics that actually feed your probiotics, and if you're not used to eating these, you're not going to have the right bacteria in your gut that is going to digest them. So one of the solutions is maybe to ferment it. That will help break down some of that indigestible fiber that's good for us before you eat it. Also, like, just don't try to eat a ton at once. Like, how I like to eat these is just dip it in some guacamole and mm. eat them. And this neutral flavor would be good with, like, a guacamole. Oh, yeah, because like, I don't eat potato so. chips or any kind of fried foods like that. But these are perfect for, uh, for guacamole dipping. Guacamole with black garlic. Have you ever tried? Oh, I got, no, I haven't. I and gotta some, try. Yeah, and sometimes if it's, like, maybe chopped up cucumbers, mm. it gives an extra crunch, too. I like these. They're just really nice and neutral. Yeah. You just dip. Great to add to salads for a mm -hmm. crunch. Um, yeah. lovely grown. Yeah, <laughs> grown yourself. Good. Okay, let's see. Now we're gonna try the. Let's try the white, white fuso. Definitely a more stronger flavor mm -hmm. than the conventional one or the common traditional one. Traditional one. Or common, yeah. Yeah, which I think some people may not like or used mm -hmm. to, you know. Um, has a little more like that artichoke kind of a smell. Doesn't have that much. Like Jerusalem artichoke or artichoke? Artichoke, artichoke. Has a little bit of that kind of a, a smell to it. There's a little more taste to it than the other one, but not that strong. Very crunchy. Mmm. It does have a little bit of that artichoke flavor too, like in the taste, not just the fragrance, mm. but nutty. So is that this one right here? Yep. Mm. Still chewing on <laughs> the other one. <laughs> That's a big one. <laughs> yeah, I grew the, the common variety last year in part shade. I just got some afternoon sun and it did really well in a 10 gallon pot and they were pretty big all right let's try it mm -hmm. I mean I, I get incense in this room <laughs> because there's just <laughs> incense in the house <laughs> yeah. oh wow very nutty I like the flavor on this yeah. one personally like a yeah. lot better the other one you just taste like like almost like nothing, not quite like nothing, but almost like that. This one actually has a nice, yeah, more, more nutty flavor. Mm -hmm. Like if you would describe it, I would describe it as just more flavorful. It definitely is flavorful. I was like, reminds me of just Jerusalem artichokes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I like that aftertaste, which reminds me again like Jerusalem mm. artichoke and like artichoke. It's like that little. Yeah, that little whatever you get at the end. Or it's not really heat. Not it's heat. kind of like a no, sweetness. Like warm. It's a sweetness, but it's like a. 
yeah, it's not like heat where you're thinking of something that's hot. It's not like a temperature. It's just some sort of like a aftertaste you get in the back of the throat that's really good. Yeah, so far I prefer that one over the first me, one. Me too. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, the last one. I'm gonna go for the red one. This is so cute. I don't <laughs> want to eat it. <laughs> this is the red fuso. This one's really, oh, very juicy. It's actually pretty sweet. Like a, I wouldn't say like an apple or anything like that fruit, you know, <laughs> but it has like a lighter, sweeter taste to it. Seems more juicy. Mm. But I think the white fuso has a little stronger flavor than this one, actually. Of that Jerusalem artichoke, you're talking about that classic taste, yeah. That was the second one did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one seems sweeter to me. Yeah. Alright, cool. I'll try this guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you look like one of those like Japanese characters on the cartoons or something. Yeah. You put little eyes on there. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. More watery. Mm-hmm. I think if you just eat the skin. Does the skin taste a little thicker than the other kinds, you think? I don't know if it's thicker, but that's where like more of the flavor is because the yeah, inside is just kind of more neutral. Because the color, right? Yeah. Yeah, and things that are more colorful have more beneficial phytochemicals. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How does this taste compared to the red ones that you grow? Oh man, it's been a couple of years, but I mean, I think, I couldn't really say. I think it's similar, but it might even be this variety. I don't really yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, I prefer this. I mean, I prefer this variety the best because, because for flavor and also that it yields more. <laughs> yeah. And because it's red. <laughs> Me too. It's really pretty. But, but yeah, more watery. Mm -hmm. I really love the crunchiness of Even these guys. Even closer to like a water chestnut, this one so far. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had a water yeah. chestnut, but oh, they're so good at this. These are. Uh, I miss. I miss my sunchokes. They're one of a, a, one amazing perennial tuberous crop that literally in most parts of the United States will just really take off and take over so you gotta control them by eating otherwise them. they'll take a, over mm -hmm. you know a whole area or a big raised bed I mean you won't be able to harvest them all next year even though we spent a lot of time digging through the soil they will come back with a yeah. vengeance <laughs> there's definitely something you, you, you just gotta miss like certain ones that's gonna miss and and who knows certain uh, roots might still continue to take, I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, just even if like some small little piece, yeah. like maybe even a piece this big, never know. You maybe it's in the soil, yep. just come back alive it's and the right time, the grow right next season. year. Yep. I mean, that's what the root, these tubers are meant to do. They're meant to stay on the ground and the plant is meant to divide and conquer. Yeah, <laughs> that's how they survive, right? Well, look at this white puso, these two. <laughs> The potential of like seeing that is amazing, right? Yeah, like these ones here, it can have the potential growing that. Like those nodes here, it's just kind of like just like swelled up roots, and and like this one here has a good example. Oh, I love almost, that because right? it'd be almost like a long, I could cut that yeah. nice and thin, and like that'd be almost artistic mm -hmm. if you're a chef or something to like use as a dipping, oh, yeah, you know, kind of like celery stick, but it's a Jerusalem artichoke stick. With a unique shape. Actually, you know, it almost kind of looks like something to me. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a monster. <laughs> something I can say on camera. Yeah, so which one is your favorite? Oh, of course. These yeah. red ones. I love the color. I love the flavor the most. They're kind of mo more watery. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I mean, and, and I mean, yeah, they just yielded so well here, so I look forward to growing these. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, we're going to go home with a couple yeah. of them. To grow for next you have year. to say that on camera, so I have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're committed now. <laughs> well, of course, you did so much anyway over there. <laughs> yeah, this is why my fingers are black and got dirt in my nails. I hope he still has some energy for his own garden. Well, tonight I'm done. I'm visiting a friend tonight, so. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah. Okay. So yes, of course you can take them home and I'd uh, love to know how you guys do and if any of you guys are interested, which I think this is definitely one of the, I think I would recommend growing these even if like for all, 
and new gardeners if they want oh, to. Oh, new tours. gardeners! This is like one of the easiest yeah, things. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, this is a wild food. Before the white man came, these were growing here in North yeah. America. So, provided you don't live in an area like Phoenix, where it might do worse than here. <laughs> um, you know, if you live in Northern California, even Southern California, as you know, you know. A lot of places around the country will just these will just take off and they could be problematic. So plant them like you would mint, but maybe not as you know, be a little bit more liberal <laughs> <laughs> when planting Jerusalem. Uh, artichokes maybe more conservative with the mint because that stuff really spreads. These will spread, but you're producing roots, and also it's cool because they grow really tall, so you can actually grow things next to them. I've, I've uh, grown these. With things growing up them and using this actually as a trellis because they try to grow pretty quick. Oh yeah, that's stick. cool. And yeah. it provides some shade for the And it provides plants. some shade, right. Yeah. And for the, I think more like places like Vegas here where it's more hot, I think they do like a lot of light does give energy to grow, but then with too much heat, you know, it also might slow right. its growth. Exactly. So maybe you can grow them in more filtered light. Filtered light or maybe morning sun or afternoon morning sun, but sun. not midday. Yeah. Because midday is the hardest time of the week. And then, of course, mulch heavy. Mm -hmm. Keep the soil temperature down so all the soil microbes can continue to work and everything really could happen properly. Yep. And then all the moist areas is where we found them to be grown. And the edges, of course. Edges. You know, So maybe plant them in pots or put artificial edges in your beds and yep. or put rocks and stones so the roots run into it and they're like, oh, I'm at an edge. Oh, let's make a tuber. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that works. It somehow stresses and freaks them yeah, out. Exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. I've definitely learned something with growing these varieties. I was like so excited about certain ones, and it wasn't like my expectations. But I've learned, you know, which ones does well here, and and how they taste, and all that, you know. So yeah, it was a fun day. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for helping out, Jeff. Oh yeah, it's all good, all fun. <laughs> I get to learn too, and get some cool roots, some oh, tumors to grow course. myself. It's Cool genetics. Oh, and would love to see how they would do for you. Yeah, well, I'm just going to throw them in the bed where I have all the sun chokes. They're going to be intermixed, and it would be interesting to see if I could determine the plants, and then next year I'll just dig, I'll just dig the whole bed up. And, <laughs> and if these, like, rule out the other ones, because the other ones are already, already a couple years established, that would oh, be very uh, interesting. Yeah. Because okay. I just have the common. Mm -hmm. I'll look forward to see how they do, and you actually really get to compare when you're video that. But mine's time. also in more of the shade, too. It's like... Maybe it would be better. But maybe, I don't know. My plants got really tall, but they're kind of more leggy than, mm -hmm. you know, these ones got a bit more yeah, wide. Yeah, these got really wide. But they need to grow leggy because they need to go higher to get the sun. <laughs> so. True. For your... Yeah, yeah, for mine. Yeah. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Is there any last words you would like to share? Oh, no. I mean, if you guys are growing the Las Vegas area, be sure to check my videos out, Growing Your Greens. I have over 1,500 videos teaching people about gardening and have a lot in this general area so that you guys could learn the exact best plants to grow so you guys have the most success so that you guys grow more food and eat food out of your garden first instead of the grocery store. For sure. <laughs> well, that is it, you guys. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you have not. You can find me on places like Facebook and Instagram where I, you know, share things in real time as well that you don't get to see on this channel. And John has his social media there that we can connect you guys to. Yeah, Growing Your Greens on YouTube and just Growing Your Greens also on Instagram. On Instagram, I try to post one a day, all kinds of cool stuff that I'm doing. Early today before I came over, I was actually slicing persimmons to dry with a cool oh, slicer. Yeah. They will slice off your fingers, but they have precision slices. I'll be posting about that probably uh, pretty soon. I think there's plenty for me to share with you guys, especially with the red fuso variety. So I'll make those available for you guys on the website as well. That's it. Cool. Stay safe, you guys. Stay healthy. And I will see you back here in the next video. Wait, where's my hand? It's like, <laughs>